Good morning, everyone. My name is Nancy Stevenson, and I wish to welcome you all here to Rothwell United Church on this Sunday morning, which is the 2nd of October. Who can believe that it's already October? Uh, if you're visiting us today, please take a moment and sign our uh, guest book, which is in the narthex just on the left as you exit the doors here. If you're looking for a church home to become a part of, uh, we hope that you will consider making Rothwell's community of hospitality your spiritual home. You are invited to ask any questions after the service of Reverend Mike, and he will be very happy to answer any of your questions. If you have any comments or concerns or some talent that you would like to share, please fill out the We Are the Church Together uh, brochures. They're the cards in the pews just in front of you, and you can place them in the offering plate or send them to the office. Uh, as is our tradition here at Rothwell, coffee and refreshments will be served in the fellowship hall after the service, and I hope to see you all there. So please join me in the responsive call to worship. We gather for worship this morning to celebrate worldwide communion. Yeah. Yeah. We need to be aware of sisters and brothers all around the world who join us this morning around the Lord's table, for we are all formed in the Creator's image. Some who gather will sing and pray, like us, in the English language. Many other tongues will also be heard. French, Spanish, Italian, Hebrew, Greek, Russian, Ukrainian, Syrian, Portuguese, Chinese, Cree, Ojibwe, Mohawk all these and many more. We are all one family we get. May God's Spirit who encounters us here in worship empower us to live in harmony with all the people of earth and to love the world in Jesus' name. Let us worship God, Creator, Christ, and Spirit One. Our opening hymn today is number 469 in Voices United. We gather here.
pray together. God, hear the sound of one voice, the sound one person calling out to you. God, hear the sound of one voice, but the sound of many hearts beating together in praise and life. God, hear the sound of one voice and the sound of one people celebrating that we are your people. Be our love, be our hope, be our possibility. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome everybody. It's nice to see you all. We are continuing to um, have our registration for Sunday Club this year, and we are also really beginning our classes in earnest this year. And one of our traditions here is to bless the Sunday Club as they go about their ministry. Now, who remembers... Who remembers how we do this? We've done it a few times. We have a moving experience. In that we ask everyone to move and do our best to form kind of a circle around the congregation. And we'll invite the kids and the Sunday Club teachers and all of those involved with leadership for the Sunday Club to stand in the middle. So, this year you are going to learn more stories about God and how God has loved His people forever. You're going to hear stories perhaps about Moses, about David. You're going to hear stories about Jesus and about his great love and his great sharing of everything he had with everyone around him. So I think it's great that we learn those stories. They become a part of who we are. But it's also important that we learn to take what we've learned in Sunday Club, which is to love each other, to feel God's love deep in our hearts, to look for different ways that we can help people in our family, at our school, in our neighborhood, and to take those stories out of Sunday Club and take all those good feelings and to share those with the people around us. I think that's the truth for all of us. You know, it's one thing to come here for an hour, maybe sometimes 70 minutes on a Sunday morning, to learn and to, to take it all in. But unless we take what we gather up in here and share it out there, I think we are missing most of the story. So as you read these stories and learn from your teachers, and as your teachers learn from you, too, because you have a lot to teach them, we can find ways that we can become God's love for everyone that we know. So I would like us all to bless the Sunday Club as they go about their important ministry. So Sunday Club in the middle with me, including your teachers. And everyone else, we're going to see if we can do this. If, you know, if you'd rather not, that's okay. I mean, I know that this is uh, something different. <laughs> different is good. Well, different is good, once a year at least. Remember that uh, Hands Across America thing? At least we don't have to go outside. Who else do we need to have inside the circle here who's not... Phil, you're inside the circle. And I, I, let me, I'm just looking around the outside to see who's not where they're supposed to be. Hmm. Laverne, you're, you're part of the children's ministry. I want you to come and join us because of the, the bell ringing. Yeah, that's all part of what we do. Okay, well, let us, let us pray. Everyone repeat after me. Dear God, it's the beginning of a new Sunday Club year, full of learning and full of fun. Send your spirit upon our teachers and our students as they not only learn about you, but find new ways to share you with the rest of the world. Amen. And we'll pray together the way Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, you could take your places now. Let's all have a moving experience. If you folks want to sit down in the front, we're going to sing a song together. But there's something we have to do before we do that.
And then after we uh, after we light the candle, Pam, if you want to do your announcement. Now, who uh, maybe one of our visitors can help me light the candle today? You think you'd feel like doing that? Help me light the candle this morning. Can you come to the front with me? Thank you. What's your name? Ilya. Ilya. Nice to see you again. L L. Sorry. I L Y I. I L Y I. Just like it says. R A. Ilya. Come join me over here. <laughs> well, you can't can't see it because it's one of our smaller candles. But today is Worldwide Communion Sunday, and we are celebrating communion with two billion or so fellow Christians around the world. And so we light our peace candle to remind us that we are not alone. We are joined by Christians all around the world. And you will find the liturgy for our Christ candle in your bulletin. Because we are in the season of creation where we celebrate the light of world of the world in the world, please join me with our liturgy here. All creation is made of star stuff. From the basic building blocks of the universe come fire, air, earth, and water. Baptized by the waters of the sky, standing firm on the earth, breathing deep the breath of life, warmed by this flame. Hallelujah. Elira, can you hold this for me? Thank you, Elira. If you want to go back to your mom, you can, okay, sweetie? Thank you. Well, we thought it was only fitting that since they are going to be learning the stories of Jesus, we would sing about that. So our next hymn is number 357, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus.
please be seated. I don't hear it. Quick announcement. If you are a parent or grandparent or whoever of some of the children and haven't signed up for this year's forms, they're behind baby Jesus there. We are going to ask that from the people's kitchen. So we can do that after the church or next week or whenever. Thank you. Thanks, ma'am. All right. Have fun in Sunday Club. We'll see you after. Our lesson from the Gospel today comes from Luke chapter 22, verses 7 to 20. And you will find that on page 86, 86 of your pew Bibles. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on, the pa- on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us, that we may eat it. They asked him, Where do you want us to make preparations for it? Listen, he said to them, When you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went, and they found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took the loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup. And after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Maybe this happens to you. Who are my cooks out there? Who enjoys cooking meals for their family and friends? I, I, really, I really do. And I don't know if this happens to you, but I, I you know, I, I, especially for Sunday, I kind of spend my week thinking about what I'd like to make for my picky eaters and for the more adventurous types. And I really enjoy putting it all together. And I, I get kind of a sense of excitement when I'm making a dinner that I know is going to be a real hit or something new for us to try. And I, and I don't know if this happens to you, but I, I try to time everything perfectly, or as best I can, so that everything is warm and ready to go at about the same time. And usually I more or less succeed. And when I do, I'm especially happy. So I, I get it all ready to go, I get it all on the table, I say, dinner's ready! And then I wait. <laughs> because there seems to be a mad dash at that point for everywhere except for the table. Uh, we have three bathrooms in our house, and they scatter towards them. And then they start to, anyway, they make their way to the table, and by then things are a little bit lukewarm, but I'm happy they're there. So, does that happen to you? That happens to me all the time. Doesn't happen here, though, because here we're already, I, don't, I won't call you a captive audience, but we're already here. We're gathered around the table, and, and if you're like me, you're anticipating that moment, that sacrament where we meet God, where we meet Christ in a way that is a little bit extraordinary. It is for me. Now, communion has gone through many changes over the centuries and the millennia. We're not doing anything new here. This was done before. This was done by our Jewish forebears in the form of the Passover meal. It's right there in the scripture that I just read. Jesus took the Passover meal and made it into his own. He talked about the new covenant, new way of interacting with God. So it began around that table. It continued in house churches across the Greco-Roman world. It was a very subversive and secret thing to do for those earliest Christians who were persecuted. They risked their very lives for celebrating the meal that we are having today. And over the centuries, it became more and more formal. And new doctrines and beliefs started to crop up and take hold. Our Catholic cousins 
believe in the transubstantiation of the elements, where the bread and the wine literally, not just figuratively, become the body and blood of Jesus. Martin Luther came around and he wanted to simplify things. He wanted to kind of democratize the sacraments, as it were. And they came up with the doctrine of con transubstantiation. And yes, I'm very proud about pronouncing that right. Where the elements were both or. Where the elements were both the body and the blood of Christ in symbolic form and for those who wish to believe in literal form. He wanted to take the blood, he wanted to take the bread, he wanted to take it out of the tabernacle, that's that locked box, and wanted to put it out for everybody to see. So he revolutionized the way that communion was. In fact, he probably brought it back closer to the way it first was, where all the elements were prepared for everyone to see and to smell and to touch, have it ready there for them. And then they ran into a very practical problem. Those big cathedrals and churches had a lot of rats in them. So then they started covering things, and I kid you not, with little white linens, just like we do today. I don't know why we do it, but it just feels like this is something special that needs to be protected but also shown. So what do we do when we have communion? Our, we don't have communion nearly as often as many other denominations do. Our, our Catholic cousins will have communion at least once a week. It's available at every Mass, every time they gather. We used to do it here, I think it was about four times a year when I first started, way back in Lot 7. And uh, we thought we would like to expand that, so now we have it about six or seven times a year. We Protestants, when we look at our liturgical service, we tend to put the Word at the top of the mountain. That was Martin Luther's doing as well. His motto was sola scriptura, only scripture. So scripture for us is that pinnacle of our worship service. At least that's the way it's designed. Not so for our Catholic cousins. The top of the mountain is this, this moment of sacrament. So I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a Protestant thing. We don't, I tend not to think about the sacraments nearly as much as I think about the word. But there's something special happening here that isn't normal, at least not part of our everyday life, and that's why we do it. First, there is the invitation. Other denominations do this differently, but the way we do it in the United Church is we have what we call an open table, and we celebrate that. We believe that this table doesn't belong to us. It believes to, belongs to God. And this sacrament belongs to everybody because of that very reason. Scripture says, for God so loved the world. And so we invite the world to this table. That's why we make it a point to say whether this is the first time you've ever had communion, whether this is the thousandth time. doesn't matter how old you are. doesn't matter what you believe. There's no test to have communion. Simply a desire to be with God. That's all you need, and you're welcome to this table. So once we are invited, we come to the table. And as they do at Seder meals, they tell the stories. In their form, for a Jewish Seder meal, is often there is an older person who begins and younger people ask questions. And as they do that, they recount the story of the Passover, about how God led them from bondage and slavery into freedom. And they tell that story again. They talk about the deeds that God did for the people and we do that too. So if you look at your communion liturgy, once we come to that point, you'll see we do that. We tell the story. We recount the things that God has done for the people of God. And then because we believe that Jesus is the Messiah, we take it that one step further. We talk about how Jesus came to be the light of the world, how Jesus brought God's love and compassion and bodily form in a way that can be touched and experienced in a different way. And though, after that, we do what people did in days of old. When there was something really to be celebrated, they sing, and so do we. We sing the Hosannas. Who knows where we use the word Hosanna most often in the church here? Anybody? Palm Sunday. Yeah. So we welcome Jesus into our midst, and we celebrate his presence just like they did. Well, maybe not just like they did, but within the same spirit as they did so long ago. 
And we continue the recounting of the story. We continue to talk about how Jesus sat with his friends and celebrated that last supper before he was murdered. And we give thanks for God's great love. There's a great paradox in there. And so we wrestle with it and we go to our faith. What happened on that day? Yes, he died, but he rose again in a way that could be experienced by those first Christians. And so we proclaim what we call the mystery of our faith in the face of sadness, but also within the presence of hope. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And then we share radically with everyone who is gathered. I think our experience of communion is different for every one of us here. It's different for every Christian around the world. I don't know what you feel when you take communion. I often feel like I'm glad it got organized so well. (laughs) It's a practical thing. But then there's this moment where I feel like I am involved with all of my senses in an act of faith, like a sacrament is meant to be. I can taste the juice, and it tastes just like the juice that I had when I went to that first United Church that I ever went to, Orleans United Church. It's always the Welch's grape juice. (laughs) And you know, there's a reason for that. Welch was the first person who figured out how to pasteurize. And he was also a very staunch member of the temperance movement. So Welch was a very good businessman and a very good member of the temperance movement. He wanted to have wine at communion, but he couldn't justify the alcohol, so he invented Welch's grape juice. And that's why we use it today, or at least that's one of the reasons. So we see it. We see the bread. We see the wine. It reminds us of the body. It reminds us of the blood. We taste it. And it becomes one with us in the way that Christ spoke of. Christ said, we are his body. And in this sacrament, we literally become so. So, take from this table whatever you need. Where those places in you that need nourishment and sustenance, I hope you find it here. Whether that be an extra dash of hope this year or this week. Whether it be a sense of strength, girding ourselves for whatever might come next in the days ahead. Maybe it's just a moment that's beyond words and expression, a simple feeling of being with God. Whatever it is, that's what our Christian hope brings to this table. And for those of us who have felt nourished by this table throughout our lives, I hope you find it again, and I hope you find a way to share it, just like our Sunday club will be doing, with everyone you encounter in the days ahead. Amen. We're going to sing one of my favorite communion hymns, and it's called, I Come With Joy, and you will find that at number 477 in Voices United.
life and work of the church insert included in the service bulletin showcases many of the activities of busy groups and committees that all operate from within our building. Please take a moment to read through it at your leisure. And if anyone has any other announcements to make, please come forward now. Uh, Eva has asked me to just bring your attention to the notice about the observer subscription. If uh, you are looking to renew or become a new subscriber, uh, please read that and let Eva know. We are collecting food for the Gloucester Emergency Food Cupboard on October 16th, and uh, you can see the list in the, bullet in the announcements of what is needed most. So please try and remember to bring in your gifts for them. While the people of God wandered in the desert, God provided manna from heaven, water from a rock, and a law to guide their way and to shape their life together. God has fed us too, and stayed with us every moment of our own journey, so that we are never alone. We are here today to be fed and to gather strength in numbers and in the Spirit of God, so we can reach out in ministry to the world God loves. Let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise. The offering will be received. together in our offertory prayer. Faithful one, you have entrusted us with so many gifts that are more important than worldly possessions. You have called us to be stewards of all that you have created. We strive to fulfill your call to be generous stewards by openly sharing the bounty you have placed under our care. We know that we visibly demonstrate our commitment to your work in this world by giving these tithes and offerings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, what are we praying for this week? What are some prayers of thanksgiving that we can offer with God and share with you? Gloria. Hello, June. <laughs> Thank you. What else are we thankful for? Yes, Jean. Oh, and what's his name? Hart? Oh, we've met before. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> what else are we thankful for? 
I'm thankful for, uh, you know, one of the many things I'm thankful for about Laverne is his ingenuity. We were, uh, had some candles donated to the, we've been having trouble with candles. I don't know if you've noticed. <laughs> Either they drip too much, or um, we've been using these spring-loaded contraptions for a couple of years, and we never could seem to get the right size candle exactly. And, and anyway, um, these were donated to us, and we had to kind of do some, uh, some ingenuity. Uh, we used to call it MacGyvering. Did you ever watch that show? <laughs> and so our, uh, our chief MacGyver here, Laverne, took them home and made a way that they, they won't fall over which is important when you're dealing with fire. <laughs> so, thanks, Laverne, for that. Any other prayers of thanksgiving? All right, how about some prayers of concern? Who uh, or what do we want to invite hope into today? Yes. I'd like to pray for Brad Lee's family. For Brad? Why, why are we praying for Brad? No, actually for his family. Oh, for his family. Um, Brad passed away after oh complications from surgery after complications from diabetes. Oh. And he was only 55. Certainly. Thank you, Nancy. Any others? Well, let's... Oh, Bill. Yeah. Thanks, Bill. Well, let's continue to pray. Holy and gracious God, as we gather at your table to be fed, we express our thanksgiving for all those things that we count as blessings in our lives and in our world. We're so grateful that June is here, and she is grateful for the support she's received, not just from us, but from friends all over, through prayers, through emails, through cards. We're grateful that Art is here from Holland to visit his family. and give you thanks for all of those in our church work together so this may be a place where we can feel safe and at home and for all those special things, those accompaniments that make us feel like this is a, a holy place. We thank you for Laverne and his work around here and those of so many others. We pray out of concern and out of hope for all of those who are struggling and living with cancer. We pray for Brad's family after he passed away after surgery. We pray for Jonathan Petra, for his mother and his father, his whole family, as he awaits for those white blood cells counts to, to rise. We pray for our city. As we mark the 50th shooting in Ottawa this year, we've set a new record. And so we ask God for peace and for understanding and for ways that communities can come together to quell the violence to help those in need, to bring about understanding and a sense of community. We, of course, pray for the world, for those faraway places that suffer great violence and injustice, for those places closer to home, perhaps even our own homes that need healing. We pray and you listen. You always have. And so we come to you in silence with our innermost prayers. in your time and in your way and as always in your love we faithfully pray you answer let the people say Amen, Amen.
As we mentioned before, this table doesn't belong to us. We are its stewards. In other words, we are given care over this table. And as such, we are trusted by God to share it with all of those who would partake in it. This meal is for you, whether this is something brand new for you, whether you count yourself as a member of the United Church or, or whether this is your first time in a United Church. Maybe you were baptized and raised Anglican or Catholic or Lutheran. Maybe, maybe it was nothing at all. It doesn't make any difference. This table is as much yours as it is anyone's. Please follow me along in the communion liturgy. The Lord be with you. Come to the mountain of the Lord. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a good and joyful thing to give thanks to you, Creator God. Out of nothing, you made all that is, mighty mountains and quiet lakes. Out of dust, you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. You called us again and again to your holy mountain to worship and praise your holy name. You led your people to Mount Sinai, giving your commandments and creating a covenant people. When we strayed and lost our way in the wilderness of life, you led us like a pillar of light. You fed us with the bread of life and nourished us with the law and the prophets. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the light that guides us. From mighty mountains, he shone with your glory. From quiet lake signs, he preached your word and taught your ways. With gentle hands of healing and harsh words of justice, Jesus invited all people to live in your love and to walk in your light. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. When you sent Christ to earth, he walked dusty roads and climbed high mountains, showing us your presence in many ways. With joy and gratitude, we remember that night in which Jesus took the bread, broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is the bread of life, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my life for the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these acts of love and grace, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving to proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine, that we might be infused with the gift of your nourishing guidance. Transform us with your nourishing grace as we eat of this bread and drink this wine. Transfigure us to be your presence in the world. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other and one in ministry. Through Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God now and forevermore. Amen. 
Today we will be celebrating communion in the pews. That means the bread and the wine will be distributed to all of you. There are two different types of bread. The more plentiful type of bread is the um, regular bread that was lovingly made for us by Lynn Current. And the smaller plates with the smaller other cubes, that is gluten-free bread. So if you require gluten-free bread, just sort of give a little signal and our servers will make sure that you get the bread that you need. These are the gifts of God. We are the people of God. All is ready. for you. Let's join together in our prayer after communion. Transforming God, may we continue to grow in Christ through the nourishment provided by the bread we have eaten and the wine we have tasted. Nurture within us a sense of call and purpose. Continue to stir us with your word and your ways. Help us to emulate the risen Jesus and be fitting vessels for your Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand as you are able for our commissioning and benediction. The world needs the spirit of community we have shared around this table. The city needs the spirit of hope we have shared around this table. Our friends and family need the spirit of joy which we have shared around this table. Amen.